You're listening to Soul Talk, your podcast for inspiration on psychological and spiritual development. I'm Kisa Paludan, a spiritual psychologist and writer, and I welcome you into the Soul Talk universe. And remember to always meet yourself with lots of compassion, patience and kindness. Welcome. Welcome everyone to this Soul Talk on the Enneagram and Purpose with the acknowledged Robert Holden. Robert holds a PhD in psychology and he is the writer of many books about success, about happiness and about love. And Robert is one of my absolute favorite teachers on the Enneagram and on the Course of Miracles. And I hope this conversation will inspire you to really feel and know the meaning of your life, of your purpose in your life. And I am so pleased and happy to be able to give you this wisdom that Robert brings to the world on the Enneagram and Purpose. Enjoy. Okay, so welcome to you, Robert Holden. I'm so excited you wanted to, to join me today. Kissa, me too. Look, I mean, I'm just, I'm just excited to have the conversation. And as ever, with the Enneagram, and especially when I'm talking about the Enneagram with a friend, you know, it's, there's always going to be some awareness that will pop up that yes. will be hopefully really interesting yeah. helpful and, and helpful somehow. Yes, I'm sure it will. So could you please introduce yourself a little bit? Well, so my great love really is is to blend psychology and spirituality together mm -hmm. that's really what i've loved to do um and i suppose what i've done is i've i've put i've put that together to explore some quite big topics in my life mm -hmm. um one of them is happiness mm -hmm. I created a project called the happiness project yeah, you were actually one of the first ever to, to, to research into happiness, right? Well, it was one of the first, definitely. I mean, you know, this was back in 1994. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it was, it was a little lonely to begin with, but I'm happy to <laughs> yeah. say it's not the case anymore. There's mm -hmm. a lot of really, you know, good research now and an interesting conversation happening. The mission statement actually in the beginning for the happiness project was literally talk happiness. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to start a conversation because mm -hmm. it was a conversation that was missing in my study. Yeah. Um, but also in, in my community of, of peers, we just didn't ever talk about happiness. In fact, I would go as far as to say, I think we were rather cynical of happiness. Yeah. Um, we were, you know, more, more in the trenches looking at the unhappiness. So, yes. you know, we didn't have much, uh, much energy or inclination to want to look at, at happiness perhaps. But then another project that I worked on, it was a project called success intelligence. Mm -hmm. Um, that was a, um, became a company in 2000, really um, a bespoke consultancy, so offering tailored courses, leadership courses and coaching journeys. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe one other significant project would be lovability. Mm -hmm. um, so a, a meditation on love and, and really a very direct inquiry into well what on earth is love and yes and how how the title lovability it was like looking at the ability to love and be loved and what makes it so easy when it's easy and what makes it so difficult when it's difficult <laughs> yeah yeah um but along the way with those projects i've been deeply inspired um by many great schools of thought um i've been very inspired by a course of miracles for instance and i've been a student of the course for 20 something years where i've done the the lessons every day of the year mm -hmm. um but also and since 2003 mm -hmm. um i've been a student of the enneagram and um and of course, you know, to this day that I find to be completely and utterly enthralling. In the early days, Kissa, the first four or five years, I really kept it to myself. Mm -hmm. um, I had no, no intention of teaching on it at all. I was just soaking it up and enjoying something that was precious for me. Mm. I felt it was influencing my work, but I wasn't mm. talking about it. I just felt like it was a lovely opportunity 
um, to go and learn uh, from some great teachers, um, uh, Claudio Naranio, uh, Don Riso, Russ Hudson, Sandra Maitri, um, amongst others, you know, some many, many great teachers. Um, but then it would have been around about maybe 2008, so for about five or six years in, that I started to just offer some offerings essentially mm -hmm. and they were two types of, of offerings really one was working in organizations mostly doing leadership in the Enneagram mm -hmm. um, and uh, so and the first big company I worked with on that was Dove uh, Dove and the Real Beauty campaign I worked with the leadership team looking actually at beauty through mm -hmm. the lens of the Enneagram mm -hmm. Um, but then also working with the leadership team and their leadership style, their leadership um, uh, skills. And then I think it would have been around about 2009, 2010, I ventured into offering public programs like Love and the Enneagram, Happiness and the Enneagram, Purpose and the Enneagram, mm -hmm. uh, Abundance and the Enneagram, that's another one, Transformation and the Enneagram. So using the Enneagram as a lens mm. to look at these very big inquiries. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's really what I've been up to. And of course, along the way, we, we met up um, and we've had some great mutual teachers, haven't we, as well? I mean, Don and Russ, of course. Who else have you been taught by along the way? Well, mostly Danish uh, Enneagram teachers, actually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And is it and it's and the Enneagram has a has a strong following in Denmark? It does. I think it's actually the country in the world with the most uh, users of the Enneagram. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite big in Denmark. Well I know from Russ, you know, he's often you know, he's often invited over and I've I've joined in with him a couple of times on those visits as well. That's yeah. really yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I I think I I well I don't think but I know I saw you the first time in in Florida on the I can do it conference. Is that where we first yeah. met? Well, we didn't meet. I just saw you, and yeah. it's so funny because I went to this conference in Florida, knowing that this would have some kind of impact on my life, but I didn't yeah. know what it was. I sometimes have these feelings of things. And then when I left, I was like, hmm, I don't know what that might be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, next year, I found myself sitting in a five-day workshop with you and Russ in London. And I was like, oh, that's it. It was this guy. This, I didn't know you before that. That's it. Yeah. That's, uh, that's why I needed to go to Florida to see you. I didn't have any workshops with you. I just saw you on the big stage. Yeah. Yeah. So that would have been three or four years ago now, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah so you're also a Hay House author and you have your own radio show, right? Yeah, I have a radio show called Shift Happens. Yeah. Um, that's every every Thursday. And I think so Danish time, that would be 7.30 in the evening. Uh -huh. uh, no, 7 o'clock rather in the evening, 7 till 8. Yeah, okay. I've run that show for nine years now. Yeah. Um, the most popular topic on the show is purpose. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah. Purpose yeah. and relationships, right? That's right, exactly mm -hmm. right. Those are the two great subjects that, that I think people want to talk about, you know, yeah. and, and want to, and I do emphasize that, the importance of talking about it so that they can clarify these things for themselves, you know, a bit yes. more. But it's one of the great conversations, isn't it? The sense yeah. of, you know, really... of exploring purpose, definitely. Yeah, so thank you for that introduction. Mm -hmm. and we we uh, agreed on talking actually about the Enneagram and purpose today. I went to to see you for three days in, in Fintorn in Scotland last month. And, um, and I'm so happy that we can share this with even more people as, as we, we record this today. Well, it's such a, I mean, first and foremost, I think purpose is obviously such a great subject. Um, but also the, I think one of the purposes of, of the Enneagram is to offer this rich and robust lens mm -hmm. to be able to look at a subject. Um, yeah. I mean, for instance, you know, my personality sits at point three on the Enneagram. Mm -hmm. Now, I think sometimes when type threes 
hijack or monopolize the conversation on purpose, mm -hmm. we go straight to what you should be doing with your life. Yes. So now that's part of purpose, but mm -hmm. to start there mm. actually, I think is part of the confusion. Yes, I think lots of people start there actually. They do, don't they? It's yeah. all about what should I be doing with my yes. life? And it's like, yeah. well, hold on a minute you know, let's start closer to home. Let's not even think about what you should be doing. Let's, let's begin with, you know, who you are and what you love and mm. what inspires you and what brings you alive and, you know, all of that. And then we'll get on with the doing bit, Yeah. you know, down the line. Yeah. So, yeah, just to say, I think it's, you know, the Enneagram gives us this great opportunity to hopefully have that more robust and, and, um, wider and hopefully deeper and clearer look at com you know at subjects like purpose yeah so why do you think it's so important for us to talk about purpose mm -hmm. well i think that's a great question so i'm i i have often wondered what is the purpose of having a purpose mm -hmm. yeah um i do wonder if on some level it's something to do with the neurosis of the ego mm -hmm. I do wonder if sometimes, um, in a way, the search for a purpose is a way of compensating for our basic fears, mm -hmm. like the Enneagram. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's, it's like, am I, you know, am I valuable? Am I needed? Mm -hmm. Am I loved? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like, is there a meaning to all of this? Mm -hmm. You know, we're looking for that. And yeah. sometimes I think on some level, like, like we hope, my God, if there's a purpose, that will help. And then so I want some kind of value. Compensation for a neurosis. Mm -hmm. But then on a higher level, mm -hmm. well, I actually think that there is the purpose of having a purpose is to tune in to our true nature. Yeah. And to tune into what is ultimately bigger than us. And maybe even also helps us to outgrow our sense of self. Mm. So by tuning into a purpose, we are signing up for a big adventure mm -hmm. and ultimately an adventure that is bigger than who we take ourselves to be. Mm. But in going on that adventure, maybe we will come to know more about who we truly are. Yeah. 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 So if people are listening, and are confused now when we talk about our true self yeah maybe could could we like start at one of the enneagram types and and have a look maybe at what does purpose look like maybe if i come from the ego and and what might be my true self as a specific type and how would i use that in the search for my purpose that's a great that idea. Makes sense. yeah shall we do that mm -hmm. So, well, should we start at one? I mean, it's as good as anywhere. Um, so ones are, I guess, um, what do you, I mean, I normally think of it, uh, the ones as the perfectionists or the reformers. Do you have another name? Mm, idealist. Idealist, yeah, that's yeah. one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's great. That gives us a, already a bit of the flavor of, of of one my experience is that people who have a personality of one are fundamentally interested in the greater good yeah and also that they are keen to leave the world a better place yeah so how can i make the world a a better place fundamentally um often they are involved in crusades mm -hmm. in my experience they can often get crucified mm -hmm. um, and often unjustly yeah that's my sense is mm -hmm. because this is your this is the type of good intentions mm -hmm. um, but what i would say is is at one it's about making sure that your good intentions are having a good effect mm -hmm because sometimes our good intentions aren't having a good effect. No. In English, we have a phrase, um, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
I think that's a challenge at one. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, perfectly. Yeah. yeah. So in my experience, when I'm coaching people at one and I, I've coached a few people at one, um, particularly because I think people with a personality at type one often like to be leaders because mm -hmm. they like to reform. They like to make things better themselves as well right themselves as well that's mm. an important point mm. um gosh that is important isn't it mm. I think that's, yeah. that's really significant when it comes to purpose because i think what you've just said makes me think about how often at one people at type one often don't feel they're ready to properly execute their purpose yet mm they feel they've got to still do some more learning, more apprenticeships. Yeah. Um, there's this sense of, and that's something to do with the incredibly high standards they set for themselves. Yeah, yeah. and um, so yeah. often I think it's, it's being able to say to people at one, look, um, good enough is perfect for now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So begin. Yeah. But, on an ego level, I think it's about saying, um, well, what it, are my good intentions? If I was to try and sum it up, I would say when it's on an ego level, it's, there's a flavor of judging. Mm -hmm. I'm judging that this is good and I'm judging that this is right. And there's often a reactivity in me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm, even though I'm, I might be rational and measured, I can feel that there is, there is, uh, there's a reaction to mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. um, there's another way of doing things at one, which is when we're not judging, mm -hmm. which comes purely from a place of vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and here we are, we are able to do something very good and help to leave the world a better place but we're not it, it but we're not trying to correct the world anymore mm. does that make sense to you mm -hmm. so 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 could you say I, the cause cause miracles um, has this um, distinction between vision and perception right it does yes yeah. so so would the one you think be the the type who would show us all how to how to let go of our own ego perception of the world yeah. and be willing to to open up to something greater than than what our ego perceives in the world absolutely i think i think that's a very for me that's a very helpful distinction you've made the perception comes from my pair of eyes that belongs to an individual self yeah and i know what's right and wrong and yeah what should be and shouldn't be. And yes. I know what everything's for. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Whereas when it comes more from vision, I think it's about, it's almost really, it begins with a prayer, which is show me how to see this. Yeah. You know, it, it's, I think, I think maybe a good meditation at one is literally is higher purpose. Yeah you know, that I am signed up for a higher purpose in my life. Mm -hmm. But if I am signed up for a higher purpose, that means my ego has to be the servant to that higher purpose. Yeah. Um, I have to be willing to engage in a more soulful inquiry mm. uh, where actually I'm taught how to see things. Yeah. Uh, and I'm being encouraged to, so it's a, it is a prayer. Yes. You know, it, it's, yeah. it comes from that place. Yeah. 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 That's beautiful. And I, I think also the one could remind all of us uh, about um, our not being ready ever or ever feeling good enough or competent enough or yeah, whatever to, to do, to do life really. Absolutely. Like I just think to myself, like, you know, when I'm writing a newsletter, you know, I, I've, I can just feel that inner critic yeah. telling me that it's not good enough. Yeah. Um, that I should be better at grammar. 
you know, I should know what a verb is and a noun is and a past participle. Mm -hmm. and, you know, if I'm a real writer, I'd know what all of this is. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it can, it just goes on and on. And, yeah. and, and there is that sense of, you know, I mean, I think at the end of the day, what I've learned from lovability, my project lovability is that, is that we are all redeemed by love. So in a sense at, at one, I think there's sometimes we run into trouble when we try, when we ask for guidance as to what's the right thing to do here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure that spirit deals in right and wrong. No. So when we say what's the right thing to do here, I think that scrambles everything straight away. Yeah. I think it would be better to, to say like, well, what's the most authentic thing to do here or what's the most loving thing to do here? Yeah, show me the way. Yeah, show, and it is to be shown. And I mm -hmm. think that's, the, that's the, great, the great thing at one is if I am going to play at a higher purpose, mm -hmm. then that means I have to be willing to to engage in in um, in a higher power with a yeah. with a higher power yeah yeah and maybe that's again part of the purpose of having a purpose is that we don't try and do our lives just on the ego level but we that the that the ego is supplemented and supported by these yeah. higher powers yeah yeah yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Makes also, I think that type one could, can remind all of us um, to be aware of, of how much we judge uh, ourselves all the time. Yeah. And um, because that would sometimes make it really hard to, to feel like we have a, an important place in the world to, to live our purpose if I'm never good enough. Absolutely. I think that's a great reminder, Kissa, for us to... To, to be able to, like I think, to if we're going to really express ourselves fully, then mm -hmm. we have to we have to try to remember that the soul has never judged us. Yeah. You know, and that life has never judged us. Yeah. And and therefore, it depends on your definition of God. Um, but if 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 your God has any love there then again the chances are you've you would realize you've never been judged by the divine this is a this is a a habit we call it the fixate word like the fixation at one mm -hmm. you know we've got fixed on it and and um and it's well intentioned but i think it sometimes just comes from from thinking that you know this is another thing in the course of miracles it says we're either judging or loving yeah yeah but, yeah so the, there's a great sense of um the, the virtue here is serenity isn't it and i think serenity is a mind without judgment yeah um so that's very disconcerting at one because often we're good judges of yes. things yeah <laughs> so we're being asked to give up our best ego talent mm -hmm. for something higher yeah and I think that, and then that is, to your point, that's the vision. Yes. That's, that's, show me what this looks like when I'm not judging. Yeah. 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 Um, and what that allows for, I suppose, is, is a, an opportunity to be educated and taught by, uh, and, and for us to see that, that there are lots of other ways of seeing things. Mm -hmm which is really handy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's yeah. very, very handy. Yeah. 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 And I think it's, it's so beautiful that, that what every type uh, is having issues of, about is also our greatest uh, wisdom of each type, right? Yes. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. If we can find a way to meet these, um, I think often at one, my feeling is, is because the standards are so high mm -hmm. and my experience is often at one, there's a feeling that I'm always failing. Yeah. Um, as well, which is really hard, you know, because, yeah. so that's, and, and, and I think that, you know, with my, I think my brother, for instance, has mm -hmm. 
personality of type one and I just I always just wish for him to take it easy and you know and, and relax and 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 have fun as well you know yeah. I'm always happy when my brother's having fun I always yeah. feel like that's a that's a good thing you know yeah. when when that happens and um yes yeah yeah to allow that yeah liveness and ease into life yeah and there's just so many paradoxes at one you know but it's ultimately ultimately in a for me in a nutshell it is like it's it's i i am happy not to be right so that i can be shown the way yes that's yeah. the key here there's yeah. something greater than being right mm -hmm. um and and also i think it's that you don't have to try so hard to be good yeah um like spirit's got your number so to speak spirit knows how good you are yeah so don't worry no yeah. like trusting your innate goodness yeah yeah trust that you know yeah. uh, you don't have to build a case to be good no you know the goodness was created already yeah so it's more about it's more you don't have to show you don't have to show god that you're good no but let god show you how good you are yes there's nothing you have to prove yeah mm. yeah that's what it feels like mm. yeah that's a relief isn't it when i just saying that i mean i'm you know i feel relieved. Really <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah 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 because no matter the type we all know what that's like right totally mm. yeah yeah definitely mm. yeah yeah should we go on to number two yeah let's do that all right so number two um sometimes called the helper mm -hmm. and the giver mm -hmm. yes. servant. yeah coach mm -hmm. i hear sometimes martyr mm -hmm. got to be a little careful of that one i think yeah yeah um I mean, my feeling is here is, is in many ways that too, it's, it is that we want to, as the title would suggest, we want, we want to be useful and we want to help. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think the St. Francis prayer, mm -hmm. um, in many ways, I think sums up the spirit of point two, you know, let me, so Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Mm. And uh, where there is hatred, let me sow love. Mm. See if I can remember it. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Mm -hmm. And so on. Mm -hmm. but, um, but it also says, um, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. Mm -hmm. um, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. Um, for it is in giving that we receive. There's that line, for, there is, for it is in giving that we receive. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, and, and you know, in being an instrument for the divine, um, you have to learn to receive. Yes. So... Yeah. Um, the prayer is beautiful in the sense of being an instrument, but it's loaded towards giving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, I think it's fair to say really, uh, too, that if we don't um, give the same attention and respect to receiving mm -hmm. as we do to giving, then we will martyr ourselves in following a purpose. Yeah. And we will end up in in sacrifice. Yes. And um, and then, unfortunately, we won't be as helpful as we want to be. We won't give. No. The same way that we would like to give. Mm -hmm. And that's when we will we will run into into trouble. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I I teach uh, self love and uh, and usually it's well all of the types can can get this um, think this is difficult but usually the twos need to ask if it isn't really selfish to to look after yourself to to allow yourself to receive to put yourself first once in a while um because it, it really feels that way and it, and it 
um, there's a lot of um, anxiety around it. Yeah. Can I actually be in the world and allow myself to receive love as well? Yes. As, the, as give love. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember on, on our, on our three day event, we had the panel for twos and yeah. there was somebody on that panel and I, I, I was sharing with her how in mystical Christianity, one of the names for God is the giver. Yeah. It was a very moving moment where there were just, she just, well, there were no words once yes. she heard that. Yeah. And there was this feeling of, gosh, you know, I've never let myself think of the divine as giving to me. No. You know, I'm, we're living in a world which is in such short supply of love and kindness and compassion yeah. and connection and relationship and, you know, that... Yeah. It was this feeling of like, well, I don't, I, I will just give what's missing. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I think, I think again, when it comes to purpose, just to consider that the divine is the giver. Yeah. And the humility at point two, which is the virtue for type two, mm -hmm. is that I'm not the giver. Mm hmm yeah you no know, this is something this is a this is a giving i'm the instrument for this yes um and 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 i'm not when it comes to love i'm not even the you know i say i love you but actually it's more that it's love loving you yes now if we if we can get a feeling for that even just a bit mm -hmm. i think that's quite exciting actually it is yeah yeah it really is I think we're playing now in a bigger way in the world where, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm an instrument of love. I'm in love's hands. Oh my yeah. God. You know, this yeah. is, it's beautiful. Um, it's pretty exciting. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And I also think the, the fact that if, if I'm to be connected with other people, I need to be connected with myself. I need to be at home as well. Beautiful. And which is sometimes, um, something that point two might miss yeah. yeah yeah oh that feels feels so so true yeah so yeah does that make sense or two that's an, enough for now just like how do we, yeah. maybe the, the meditation would be partly would be like when do i feel like i'm an instrument for yeah. something for something greater yes you know yeah that could be nice yeah 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 so threes, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to need some help with this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this, is where, this is where I sit in the Enneagram. And um, well, I, th I think maybe a little bit like what I said at the beginning, that so much of the conversation at three is about doing. Yeah. What am I doing here? Mm -hmm. What am I going to do with my life? Mm -hmm. I should be doing more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what I'm up against all day yeah. long. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, and it's crazy, but it's there. Yes. So, you know, all my friends mm -hmm. say, well, there's no hope for any of us. You, you do so much already. If you yes. think don't do enough. Yeah. You know, like that's unfair because that's. What, it is unfair. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, you know, none of us stand a chance then. And they're right. You know, it's a really good point. So. Yeah. I think that um, one of the reasons why purpose was so important to me was because of a compensation for my basic fear, which is the sense of, well, what's my value? Yeah. I just don't know what my value is. No. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, I was growing up and there was, I don't know how, you know, I, I was beginning to work out that the world was a bigger place than I realized. Mm -hmm. um and you know there's several billion people on the planet and how do you how do you add value mm. you know in a sea of people like that how do you stand out mm. you know um how do you get attention how do you get loved how do you how do you do something valuable that yeah. was the feeling mm. and i suppose at three there's this sense of well if i do enough i'll mm. feel uh, that's my currency. If the currency at two is giving, the currency at three is doing. Yeah. And it could still be giving because, of course, it could be my two wing. Yes. Um, 
or it could be my forewing, you know, if I just write poems, you know, it, that will help, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, but I think, I think this, this sense of, again, of a prayer of like, show me my true value. Yeah. Yeah, show me my yeah. true value feels important. Yeah. Makes and sense. to know your value in your, in your being, right? Yeah. Without, without your doing, without yeah. anything. Yeah. Show me my value as a, as a human being. That has literally been a, a meditation for me, Kissa, you mm -hmm. know, realizing, you know, and it, goodness knows this took a, a long time to realize, but, you know, it was like, you know, it's like, it's sort of like a, a one, it's like, well, how many judgments does it take before I'm going to not judge myself anymore? Yeah. And, and at two, well, it's like, how many people have I got to save, you know, mm -hmm. before it's my, before someone looks after me? And, and at three, it's like, well, how much have I got to do before I can rest? Mm -hmm. And like properly rest. Yeah. Not just for half a day. No. Like, but properly rest. Yeah. And it just looked endless to me. It was yeah. just a sense of, no, actually, this is, Robert, this is, there's no progress here. You think there's progress. You mm -hmm. think that if you do enough, Mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. but this is not progress this is a trap yeah and yeah. so then I, I remember sitting down during one of my dark nights and, and just saying you know look I think I need you to show me my value yeah I need a feeling of that I need to feel somehow there is some inner gold here yeah um, and and if there isn't any well, that's all right too, but at least I know. Do you know yeah. it was like yeah, that? Yeah. Was that feeling? I want to stop chasing it. Yeah, mm. exactly. Mm. And but, and it was that feeling of I need to I need to know that. And mm. I think at at at, um, at three as well. That was something to do with even if we didn't make it spiritual for a moment, and we just made it about a relationship to our own heart. Mm -hmm. There's something in that as well. Yeah, there is. Yeah. So what were you shown when you asked? So for me, once I really started to ask those questions properly, um, it became very difficult to, to not talk about love. Mm. <laughs> it just really seemed that it was all about, it mm. was all about love really. Mm. Um, and that my, you know, that my definition of success needed to be not so much doing things for love, but more loving what I do. Mm. It felt like that shift was important. Yeah. Because if I'm doing it for love. Yeah, yeah. I'm still doing it. Yeah, it's yes. still a doing. Whereas yeah. if I just, if I just love what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. There's something innately good about that and, and yeah. innately valuable about that. Yeah. So, do, uh, so yeah. do you love what you do instead of doing what you love today? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the, I think, you know, these things are always maybe not quite so black and white, mm -hmm. you know, like I've never had a proper job. I've mm -hmm. never gone to work somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I've always in a way done what I've, loved but maybe in my percentage terms it was doing what i love mm -hmm. was i don't know 20 percent mm -hmm. and 80 percent of it was so that i'd be loved yeah you know mm -hmm. and so that that um percentage i would say honestly that is that's a fluid thing and that there mm -hmm. are there are it shifts yes and, and i'll have i'll have some good spells Mm -hmm. you know where I'm really doing something where it really I can feel I'm doing it for the love of doing it mm -hmm. um like you know when I'm writing in my journal and there's no audience yeah I know I'm doing that for just that that is because I love doing it yeah just you know, for you. yeah just mm -hmm. for me that's a good example but then definitely there will be times where I just get into the old habit of saying yes to something maybe just to be loved a bit yeah. more yeah know? 
Yeah. So yeah, it's something I just have to watch for, I find. Yeah. So if uh, you said yes to you and and you find out that you you've done that, what do you do with it? If I have done that? Yeah, if you if you realize I said yes to this thing not because I love it but because I want to be loved. Yeah. Um, well, how would you meet yourself in that? No, well normally I know that something like that's happened because I'm feeling tired. Mm, yeah. That will be one of the ways I know. Yeah. So it's almost like my body intelligence tells me. Yes. It, it's um, and also I can't quite feel it here. Yeah. So I've made a mental decision, probably. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like come on, just. Mm -hmm. And also, like at three, which is, isn't very clever, really, but it's like I can override my feelings. Yeah. Like I can just say, like, get the job done. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that. Well, you know, one of the things with success intelligence, really, my project was very much about making sure that I was in a conversation about what true success really is. Yeah. And I think that from a point of view of purpose, I think a lot of it has been to, to claim back, you know how it's one of the strengths at three is to be inner directed mm. rather than crowd pleasing. Yes. Um, and so it was like looking at definitions of success and saying, well, hold on a minute. Is that my definition of success mm. or am I trying to live up mm. to what success is in the world? Yeah. Actually, I think that's so important for everyone to, to take in how important yeah. it is to, to, to ask ourselves that question, what is my definition of success? What are my values yes. in life? Absolutely. My core, like my core values, my soul values of life. Yeah, exactly. And am I following those values or not really? Yeah, absolutely. And that, that as a little example, I mean, when I, when I, my coaching practice started to go, go quite well and you know, people were saying to me like, well, now, from now on, you must only coach CEOs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and also you must only charge this rate. Yes. And it was like, great. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, no, yeah. in my heart, that doesn't feel right. I don't want to just coach at that level. No. Um, and then, and then people were telling me, yeah, but if you coach at a lower level, you're perceived as not being so valuable. <laughs> and it was like you must only coach you know sort of CEOs from now on yeah. and and it's, and you mustn't charge a lower rate because then you're not valuable so this is big mm -hmm. for the three it's like oh yeah. my god what's my value yeah but my heart said well my heart just said be more open than that yeah and don't um, you know that and it's a way again maybe with the help of a course in miracles it was it was I was able to look at those opinions mm -hmm. and say well are those opinions coming from love or fear? Yes. And honestly, they felt like they were coming from fear. Yeah. Um, and they were more to do with my PR yes. than they were to do with the substance of who I am as a person. Yeah. So that's an example, perhaps, where mm. I had to think about success as a coach. Mm. Um, and, you know, I also had to, for instance, another example would be that I, I... I needed to think about how many people I wanted to coach. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I was good at coaching, mm. but that doesn't mean you should do it a lot. No. You no. Know? And, and I was, I was, you know, reasonably good at it and there was a, a demand for it. Mm -hmm. So that would have meant a very nice income, but there are so many things that I love to do that, you know, that, really frankly there's no money involved yeah so yeah. those are those moments really yeah. around mm. following following your heart yes uh, yeah the wisdom of your own heart which yeah. sometimes isn't logical and it sometimes mm. isn't practical yeah but it's worth tr it's worth a go yeah i think point point three can remind all of us how important that is and also you know we have young people in in our home and so i see lots of young people and and you know we try to figure out the right direction in life yes to 
to calculate hmm. what would what would what would be the the right direction for me to to go yeah and we have, we we don't know that but we can we can if we let ourselves be led by the heart or led by love yeah it feels really good kissy you're you're making me think that like in england at the moment i think that you know in the way that corporate america is quite three-ish in its mm -hmm. culture yeah. i think in england our education has become a very three culture yeah you know you're you're absolutely educated for work yes <clears throat> you're meant to join the workforce yes either at 18 or at 21 you're meant to know exactly what you're doing or you want to yeah. do denmark is the same <laughs> is it yeah so stressful yeah it's uh, i think it's incredibly stressful and when we when we maybe this is also good to point out particularly as we start to lean into four is that you know for for many of us i mean purpose as an inquiry it, it moves as we go through stages of life exactly it's it's not realistic that we take an education and then want to do exactly that yeah. for the rest of our lives and that's what we expected to do right absolutely to choose something at a at an early age of life that absolutely we cannot really and i yeah. think actually lots of young people today feel that they know it's not it's not right but the system is still very much into that it's a lot of pressure isn't it it is i mean as we maybe if, as we move into four i mean i'm thinking of somebody who i've i've actually coached for quite a long time um and he's a he's a, um a, a leader in um in a multinational organization he's a type seven mm -hmm. um but his son is um a type four on the enneagram and he is 19 years old mm -hmm. and he's struggling yeah you know he's he's just you know there's so you've got this interesting dynamic of the seven saying come on let's go mm -hmm. um and you know and the four energy of which is slower mm -hmm. um um more more feelings often as well and and mm -hmm. a sense of <clears throat> i think also you know the seven dad is saying just say yes to something mm -hmm. uh whereas actually the four son is saying no to everything yeah um including the course he's on at the moment mm -hmm. you know it's still yeah. all uh, it's all really no at yeah. this stage you know it's a sense yeah. of no mm -hmm. um and and intriguingly though and mm -hmm. this is what's so intriguing is is the father at seven is <clears throat> um having very very big thoughts about well what's the purpose of his life right now mm. so there's this beautiful mirror yeah of you know like the seven dad who's raced his way through mm. life and done mm. amazingly mm -hmm. but he's sort of at a point now where it's like well what's it all for yeah you know mm. and then there's his son at 19 going mm. well yeah but what's it all for yeah and so they're both like you know looking at each other and mm. uh, we've had a couple of sessions together as well mm. just to try to really mm. help each other see we're in this together mm. Beautiful. Um, and there are times you know when we're not so sure of our place and mm -hmm. you know what what lies for and we have to be willing to again at point one be be willing to let go of our theories about what's mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. you know at point two be receptive mm -hmm. at point three um be willing to be underemployed from time to time yeah right not always doing but a bit of space a bit of being mm -hmm. Lindhorn is my being place you know yeah. for that for that at four i mean you know often i think it's fair to say at four the invitation is to somehow go deeper mm -hmm. Um, in the inquiry, whatever the inquiry is, mm -hmm. and um, I'd say as well at four, it's there's something about, and I think this is a very profound inquiry, but it, it's the it's the idea that um, we come to our purpose through our wounding. Yeah, uh, it's by looking at at where we are afraid or where we're sad. 
Mm. or where we have been in pain mm. or by what we accuse ourselves of mm-hmm. is by by being and and it's by being emotionally honest about that yeah um which means not being positive mm-hmm. um, but being honest yeah and really identifying some of these very what you think of as very private pain but Mm. you know that phrase you know that which is most personal is also most general i'm going to share something very private with you now um and actually like great songwriters Mm -hmm. you know they're able to you know they're able to sing sing their heart out and we can all relate yes exactly so i i think at four it's about looking at well where what is my wounding yeah you know um Mm. on a personal level you know i would say my my wounding early on was a was a family wounding Mm -hmm. um so my mum experienced depression Mm -hmm. in her life and you know and i created a happiness project yeah um my dad was alcoholic and he lived homeless for Mm -hmm. the last on and off for the Mm -hmm. last 10 years of his life and i created success intelligence yes so you know, even even in the family wounding, yeah, you know, I was addressing something. Then my own wounding, you know, there's that sense of am I even valuable? Yeah, you know, I think maybe lovability was more for me. Yes, as a project. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and but so you contributed with all of the projects to lots of other people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, through your own thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think something about just being really honest about our wounding yeah. and and the at four on an ego level, it's well, it's because I've been wounded that I won't be able to fulfill my purpose. Yeah, I'm too wounded. Yeah, exactly. Mm. That's it, exactly it. Too wounded. Yeah, and then, but it's like that's the. And that's then when emotional honesty needs to be supplemented with spiritual honesty. Yeah. And for me, that's the big thing at four is, is fours, fours, I think can sometimes confuse, can, can confuse emotional honesty with emotional intensity. Yes. So like, I'm so intense about this. I'm being mm-hmm. honest. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yes, you are. But there is another honesty that's bigger than this. Yeah. So you might be the one that's feeling, yes. you know, that the whole world's inauthentic. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. Yes. and, you know, we've got to go for that spiritual honesty as well here, which, some, which can help us deal with that. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. And spiritual honesty, would, that, would you say that that means knowing that there is a part of me that doesn't suffer? I think you've nailed it. I mean, that's that. <laughs> it's so big to say, isn't it? It's so amazing. I mean, wow. It's it is. Yeah, it it's is huge. Yeah, it's huge. And it's. Wow. I mean, it's and I think at four, it's like you've just you really have just been undone at four if you believe if you can feel that yeah because yeah. you you're now you're you're i think fours are often we're all trying to be special in different ways mm-hmm. but yeah this is this is a way of undoing that specialness yeah. and yeah and the, my whole identity actually yeah. right because yeah. it's so based on being the one who suffers yeah Absolutely. Yeah. And I think so. I think I think that's that's the thing here is that's the emotional, the spiritual honesty to your, to your absolute point that we're not in truth. There mm. is somehow, and it, this has to be a personal inquiry. I don't think it's you can be told this. You have to feel this for yourself. But it's like it's the it is the invitation to consider that the soul isn't suffering. Yes, and was never heard. And, and was never heard, which is like, wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's big. It's really big. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, a, there's a beautiful invitation for all of us at point four to become honest with our wounds and yeah. and actually um, see the gifts in them, right? 
it, absolutely. Yeah, like just bring bring it somehow. Yeah, bring it all. Yeah, bring I'm so grateful for all the wounds that I have with me because they all contribute to to everything I do today. Yeah. 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 That's every, it. Every one of them. Every Even though when I was younger, I wish I didn't have them. But, yeah. But now I really, I really don't wish that. Yeah. It's I'm amazing, isn't it? I'm grateful for all of it. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I feel, I do, I feel that way too. I feel like it's, you know, I think at four as well, there is the awareness just, of course, that there is suffering. Yes. You know, fours are the type that are, are never going to really ever let us forget that in a way, and rightly so. Mm -hmm. Um, but if we can somehow meet that suffering properly, yeah, then somehow amazingly, and goodness knows really how any of us ever do this, but we do seem to do it. We are able to somehow use it. Yeah. And, um, that's amazing. It is amazing. That's amazing. It's almost like it, it gets so fine. It might, it could, it could almost kill us. And then somehow we find a way to use it. You know, I, I, I'm in awe of that. You know, yeah, I don't know how people do that really, Kissa, but, but people do. And, yeah. and we do. And, and yeah. that's an amazing thing. It is beautiful. And it reminds us all to, to do the opposite of spiritual bypassing, right? Yes. To become truthful and stay with whatever wounds we might have with us mm -hmm. until they dissolve. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Which just takes some, some courage for most of us. To yeah. Be truthful and stay with it. As long and I as think it's true. And it's, we, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, um, so yeah, it feels like somehow using everything to help us fulfill our purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, nothing disqualifies us. No. Nothing at all. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. I love it. So five, um, what do we got? The five, the, the investigator, mm -hmm. um, the observer, mm -hmm. the researcher, the analyst. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think the great drive here is to want to understand. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think the capacity to pay attention for sustained amounts of time. Yeah. One of the great skills, one of the great qualities at five. Yeah. Um, which I think is fantastic. Um, also a real sense of a little bit like, um, I think a little bit like at eight, it's the feeling of I will not submit to the world. Um, I'm going to see it my way. I'm not going to see it the way everybody else sees it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to question mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, and I'm, yeah, I'm not going to just take things as read. Yeah. And I think like the eight, this is longing to see things clearly, right? Yeah. So I'll investigate and investigate and investigate and read and read and read until I have this sense of clarity. Yeah. So it feels really, yeah, like I'm almost like an interesting balance of I'm cynical and curious all at once. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm cynical about the way everybody else is seeing it, mm -hmm. but I'm curious to see if I can see it in a way that would, you know, do something. Now, I think what's hard, I have to say at five is, is that I think that often at five, um, just, I think the education system can really fail type fives. Yes. You know, I mean, I, I mean, I imagine we could say that about, you know, any poorly run school. Mm -hmm. but I think there's this sense of five of, of, yeah, of just, it's very, very hard to bloom and blossom early on. Yeah. You know, in education system, I think at five. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, 
And so often we retreat to our own inner world and we take on our own curriculum, mm -hmm. you know, of studying grasshoppers. Yeah. And, and, um, and, and doing experiments with, with chickens and things, you know, mm -hmm. like, I mean, it's just that way. Mm -hmm. I think the great thing here is, is obviously is wanting to contribute to some understanding yeah how can i how can i how can i participate and contribute in the world this is the healthy level i think mm -hmm. at five yes participating contributing adding some adding something to the conversation yes having a skill set adding some insights adding an expertise mm -hmm. being able to bring in some new understanding yeah fresh way of seeing something mm -hmm. um, that feels very, very um, ex exciting. Yes. You no. Know? Um, and one of the companies where I've done some work with the Enneagram is, is Google. Another one is IBM. Mm -hmm. um, and both of them have quite strong five ish um, feelings around, you know, culture mm -hmm. around. Um, and there is this great sense um, of actually at Google, funny enough, it often felt like great teamwork between fives and sevens. Mm -hmm. um, but there was just this sense of, yeah, of exploration. Yeah. Real frontier stuff. Yeah. But it was um, frontiers, you know, not, not, um, not on physical terrain, but mental terrain. Yes. You know, and mm -hmm. really, um, really showing us whole new ways to do things. Mm -hmm. I think that's, but giving us new insights, laying down a map, mm -hmm. you know, our, our, our mutual friend and, and teacher, Russ Hudson, you know, I mean, my goodness, you know, mm -hmm. how just extraordinary, Amazing. how you mm -hmm. can, he can just reel off yeah. insights left, right and center. He's got yeah. a, you know, some sort of an epiphany machine strapped to his back. Yeah you know, where they just yeah. keep coming out. Down, downloading stuff. Yeah. yeah. And that's such a lovely quality. Yeah. yeah. And really, really helpful. Um, when we were doing the workshop, you know, I, I, I focused on um, um, Mary Oliver, the poet, mm -hmm. who I feel as well was... Sh um, so it's just to say that, that these, you know, sometimes I think people can give us new insights through poetry mm. um, or through science mm. um, or through some sort of physical um, exercise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are all sorts of maps, I think, that are, we, we get to be shown. You know, um, I just picked up a book this morning looking at the Kabbalah. Mm -hmm. It was like, as soon as I opened it up, it was just this feeling of, oh my God, this must have been written by somebody at five. Yeah. Um, there was such clarity, mm -hmm. but also structured thinking that was extraordinary, you know? Yeah. And I was just yeah. like, I was also overwhelmed, I have to be honest. There were yeah. so many insights in the first few pages. Yeah. It was like, oh my God. Yeah. You know, this is so much. It might not yes. seem much to the person who wrote it, but to me, <laughs> yeah, it was like lots here. Yeah. But yeah. I think something about you know, a, 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 I I think a nice a nice um, meditation at five is what what conversation do I want to do I want to get involved in? Mm -hmm. There are some great conversations happening in the world right now. Mm -hmm. Mm. What conversation would I like to get involved in? Yes. And I think that's a very healthy inquiry for mm. a withdrawn type. Mm -hmm. But it is a conversation. Yeah. And it is about saying, well, maybe I want to get involved in, you know, in, in some environmental project. Mm -hmm. And I'll lend my awareness, my, my mm. expertise to mm. that, my research capacity for that. Mm. Maybe it's something else. But... Think of the conversation you want to get involved in mm -hmm. and something somewhere where you might want to further some understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think to to allow yourself to to have your your knowledge being used in the world and to allow yourself 
Well, to have the importance and and to know that you know enough yeah. to step into the world and take your place and contribute. And, and that's also an act of love, right? To become present with what we already know. And what I love the way you said are. that. I think that's right. You know, it, it makes so much sense. It reminds me a little bit like over at one again of yes. like being good enough, but also of knowing enough. You exactly. know, like, yeah, we, we know enough to make a start. So let's make a start. Yeah. Yes, it, it's frustrating that it's not the whole body of knowledge. Mm -hmm. It is frustrating. And, and probably can never be. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it must be like in the field of technology, like issuing, issuing products that don't work very well to begin with must be like, mm -hmm. you know, it must be like really difficult. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, you can see how it must cause trouble even with our own values, but it's like, if we don't put it out there, how can we, how can we update it? How can it, yeah. these things need to be used and, yes. and yeah, our yeah. ideas and awarenesses need to be, it's a conversation. I think that's the thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But to allow ourselves to come into life enough to be a part of the conversation. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love that. Mm -hmm. And it goes for all of us, right? That to to remember that we that we know enough already. Yeah, don't you think it, mm -hmm. that makes sense to me? That you've just got to. It, it's like a little bit like when people are also like putting together their website and things yeah. like that. It's like you know, it's like just do do your first draft because yeah, your second draft will be better anyway. Yeah. Um, but also with your first draft, don't try and tell the world everything. Yeah. Tell the world one or two things. Yeah. You no, know, a bit like Google, you know, and the like, you know, it's just that yeah. little bar, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, imagine what Google could do with a front page. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, but it's like, no, we're just going to give you that little bar and you can do yeah. some searching. Yeah. And these other little bits, if you want to click on them. Yeah. We'll give you a universe of. <laughs> yes. To explore. But. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Actually, when I was uh, flying from Fintorn, I was flying over Manchester to Italy to lead a retreat, uh, a self-love retreat. And yeah. I forgot my, I, I didn't sleep all night because I had to get, get up so early. So I was so tired and I forgot my computer in the airport. In no. Manchester. Yeah. And I, you know, I had my whole program uh, for the retreat on the computer and all the other programs I've had on other retreats and things yeah. like that. And so I just had um, the, the retreat thing uh, sent from home to me and had that printed. And that was, all the, that was all I had. And it was really good because usually I would have gone through all the other retreats and other courses to see if I had everything that I needed. And I would have gone over it again and again and yeah. again. And it really wasn't necessary. I think it was actually better wow. because I didn't do that. That sounds like a, a spiritual initiation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you did well. You yeah. did so well. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well done. My God. Yeah. 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 But I, I really had to, to watch myself for this, you know, this wanting to have no more and yeah. put more into it. And yeah. Yeah. I can, I can completely relate. I think you did amazingly, Kissa. <laughs> Thank you. I, I was, I had help. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. the way. It's yeah. The way. Yes. All right. Number six. Should we mm -hmm. do type six? Mm -hmm. um, so I've often wondered about the name for six, by the way. You know, I, I, I've never quite been able to get something that feels totally right for me no. here. No. Um, um, I do like Loyalist, you yes. know. I do, I do like it, but it, it's, it's interesting. It's just one of those ones I've never quite no. found. No, because, because being loyal is just part of, it's not the whole picture, right? It is it's really. an important part, but it's, yeah. it might not nail it completely. It doesn't feel, it. I wonder if maybe that's a little bit just to do with the type that it doesn't like to be yeah. 
pinned down anyway, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. So we might find the right moving target. Yeah. You know, maybe it's that. I, but it'd be intriguing. You know, I'm always on the lookout for just how other teachers give these mm -hmm. names, you know, mm -hmm. because it's in, it is intriguing. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think, honestly, at uh, six, my feeling is, is that one of the great spiritual lessons at six mm -hmm. is the need for a daily spiritual practice. Yes. Um, and that really, if we are to experience our purpose, then actually part of our purpose is to have spiritual guidance. Yeah. Um, and you could almost say on one level, you could say, well, our purpose is to have spiritual guidance. Yes. And then once we have spiritual guidance, we'll know what the purpose is after that. Yeah. But just to on a certain level, be able to make your mind available to the big mind. Yeah. Is, I think, a very important thing to do. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. And knowing that that takes a daily spiritual practice, right? It doesn't I, happen on its own when everyday life takes us. I think so. Mm. I, I, I do feel that, Kissa. I just think that at six, six people with a type six personality of a uh, super aware of the psychology of the human human mind yeah and the honestly you know when you look at the psychology of the human mind it's you know it's full of doubts it's full of worries it's mm -hmm. full of judging mm -hmm. it's you know it, it's it there's a lot going on there that's not very pretty and it's like, it's just an awareness that actually we really need some, some sort of like psychological help really. Yeah. And, and that help I think comes through being able to have enough vertical moments in our horizontal life. Yeah. Um, and those vertical moments I think come through stillness, mm -hmm. through silence, mm. through spaciousness, yeah. And through a capacity to listen for that guidance. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they'll remind all of us about how crazy our thoughts are really if we if we don't watch them, right? If we don't yeah. um connect to the place in us where we can watch our thoughts, thought yeah. systems from. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that goes for all of us. We all have Yes. Well, to stay sane, really, we do need practices. Yeah. And then I think, because if we, in a way, I think often at six, the great concern is, well, is what can I trust? Mm -hmm. And, you know, in a way, we can't trust our own thinking. No. It, it's actually a very good question. What can we trust? You know, it's often considered like skepticism to... Mm -hmm you know, to not be trusting, but mm -hmm. on a certain level, a bit of skepticism is, is actually an appropriate response to something that's unreliable. It really is. And we need to be skeptical of our thoughts. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think it's a, an appropriate response. It is. What isn't appropriate if we, is if we become skeptical about everything. Yeah. So we need to be able to, to be skeptical about you know the things that deserve our skepticism mm -hmm. but then at the same time to be able to say that somehow to lend our trust to something yeah um and maybe it's even more that i think it's i think it's unwise or maybe even un unrealistic to ask our ego to trust yeah 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 i think so too i'm not sure it understands the concept really yeah it's because how because the ego is a sense of a separate self yes so when that's how do you remain separate and trust anything yeah um you you can give something the benefit of your doubt mm -hmm. so to speak but that just means i'm going to trust you until it goes wrong Yes. You know, it's like, that's more, I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm watching. Ah, oh, there you go. Mm. Now I won't trust. So what we need to do is to see if there's a place in us which does trust. 
Mm. And that's more when I think we try to look for something more soulful and, and to see what, that I like to look at it the way of, well, what if actually, what if, what if the divine trusts us? Mm. Yeah. I mean, you know, that uh, just as a thought. Yeah, but, it's a nice thought. What would I, what would I do in this, uh, in this situation if I was, if I knew I was completely trusted by the di divine? Yeah. Exactly. Mm. And that, you know, and that I've got what it takes to yeah. complete this journey. Yeah. And that I will be guided. Yes. And that there will be support. Yeah. I will be able to find that along the way. Yeah. That's amazing. It really is. Yeah, it is. You know, I think that's very, very beautiful. And, and it's, um, and again, I think it's a, it's a type of trust which says, look, and I know you don't feel good enough. And I know you're worried. And I know mm. you're wounded. Mm. I know you give more than you receive. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know you don't understand everything. But the divine still trusts. Yeah. Yeah. That even in the mess of all of this, we're somehow, mm. we, will, we will play our part. Yeah. Um, yeah, to tune into that kind of trust, even in the in the mess of everything, right? Yeah, you know, life is vulnerable. Yeah, exactly. Love is vulnerable, and so how do I how do I stay mm, close to myself and and trust life, knowing 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 and feeling the vulnerability of life at the same time? Yeah. I think so. And, and, and so therefore, as a practice, just to be really tuning in to being guided by life. Yeah. And being really open to how that guidance is coming to us, by the way, as well. Yeah. You know, and trusting that, that life is always going to try and help us somehow. Yes. Um, even, when, even when our ego think not. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And it might be that, that our the guidance will come to us in ways that actually are not for the intellect to decipher. Yeah. It could be that sixth sense. It could be an intuition. Yeah. It could be the Robin, you know, that, that sits mm -hmm. you know, on, on the bough of a tree and looks at us and, you know, yeah. it, it could come to us in different ways. Yes. Um, and I think that's sometimes I think, being open to guidance coming to us in different ways is part of the training in being guided. Yeah. Yeah. Like you've got to train yourself to be yes. open-minded. Yeah. And to, to really let the guidance come in in different ways. Yeah. Be receptive. You think it's only going to come in in your way. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, that's, that's not, that's not the big mind. That's still yeah. your small mind. Yeah trying to fit the big mind into your mind rather yeah. than yeah 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 so i think if we want to live a life of purpose yeah i think the key is is a, some spiritual guidance yes you know? yeah. yeah and a practice i know it sounds to some people it can sound a bit like a rule it's not meant to be a rule it's just it's but it's more just just a sign that you are giving to your own mind that mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. you are open for business. Yeah. I'm not going to try and do this by myself today. Yeah. I'm open for business. Yeah. I'm open to letting, I'm open to some new thoughts. Yes. You know, I'm not going to just work off the theories that I've already assembled. Mm -hmm. to get me through the rest of my, my existence. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm open. Yeah. That feels important. Yeah. Yeah. Number seven? Yep. Okay, you know a bit about this. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your favorite names for seven? Um, the adventurer, the enthusiast. Yeah. Um, the, um, I don't know the word in English, but someone who really just enjoys life. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We call it sometimes the epicure. Epicure. Uh huh. Yeah, it's an uh, yeah, it's an interesting phrase, but it is that sense of yeah. What is your favorite word? The connoisseur and enjoying it. Um, I love those. Um, 
I think I also like the pilgrim. Yeah. Yeah, I like that too. Because I think that there is this sense at seven of being on a journey. Yeah. That life is a journey and and for all of the fun, there's a profundity with my seven friends that I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's this sense of the real sense of of I'm 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 actually searching for for the sacred. Yeah. I want to have a good time whilst I do it, and it and it should be, and it, and also this it should be a good time. Yeah. I mean, what's the point of all of, of being on the spiritual path if it isn't going to mm -hmm. lead to more happiness ultimately? Mm -hmm. I mean, properly, what's the point? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just makes no sense to do no. all this if it isn't going to somehow increase our experience of happiness. Mm -hmm. but I, I do feel something about the, the sense of being on, on that journey. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And... And therefore, sometimes, you know, maybe the purpose as well is to, is to think about what is the real journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is our real journey? Yeah. 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 What is that? Mm. Um, we, we have an experience of, of, of wanting to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. Where is that somewhere? What is that somewhere? Yeah. Uh, and and um, paying attention to that sense of, of, of of journeying mm -hmm. is 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 really really is really important um, yeah. i think lots of us will from an ego perspective will think that i'm on a journey and in a little while it's i'm gonna or at some point i'm gonna reach the goal and then my life will look good yes and i'll be happy then i'll be I'll feel the love for myself and other people and but I just need to go a little further on this journey and I'm looking for things outside of myself to Yes. Yeah. Yeah, to help me reach the goal, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, with the happiness project, one of our sort of major teachings at the happiness project was that or even I could say the purpose of the happiness project in many ways was to help people stop searching for happiness and to start following their joy. Yeah. It's so important. Yeah. And those are two different journeys. Yes. The search for happiness. That's a journey. Yeah. Following your joy. That's a journey. Yeah. Um, Maybe um, that's a real journey, right? Yeah. Well, it, I think that's the, the following your joy feels definitely to me more wholesome mm -hmm. yep and there's a fullness there yeah. that yeah. we're drawing upon mm -hmm. whereas searching for happiness starts from an emptiness mm -hmm. um for yes. searching for happiness i'm searching for something that's not here mm -hmm. it's not even present mm -hmm. in the future i've mm -hmm. got to get there mm -hmm. it's somewhere you know, it's somewhere to arrive at. Whereas mm -hmm. following my joy, oh, hold on a minute, I'm, I'm actually following something that exists already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in my experience, lots of people don't know what their joy is. Well, no. when being asked, they can, they can find it, but they, but they don't know it really. And it's often, you know, every, every day, things like hearing children laugh, smelling new cut grass, you know, things like that. Yeah. I, I, I agree, and I think you've, to me, you've really, again, just completely lasered in on it, which, because if we're searching for happiness, we won't know what our joy is. No, no. That's the whole point. Yeah. The searching for happiness is the very thing that stops us knowing what our joy is. Yes. And we use so much of our lifetime searching for happiness and actually doing things that we don't really enjoy absolutely like watching too much television or whatever lots of different yeah. things it's a sense of often i think with searching as well we're often consuming yeah i'm consuming experiences yes and i'm just rattling through my you know my bucket list is mm -hmm. you know like is it's endless <laughs> yeah 
it is and I'm getting worried because also because I've done a lot of things on my bucket list and mm -hmm. you know it just yeah you know it's not hitting the spot yeah you know so so yeah I think to follow your joy mm -hmm. is um it's profound you know it, yeah it is profound I mean like if I just think for a minute like you know like like when I'm writing a book, it's, mm. as you all know, mm. I love the feeling of I'm on purpose. Yeah. I love the fact that there's a journey. It is my joy yeah. to write this book. At the same time, it can be painful. It can yeah. be confusing. It frustrating. Can be yeah. So frustrating. You know, you can push a, a sentence around for two hours and it just doesn't feel right. And, yeah uh, and all of that so there's something here about the joy that means that you go the distance yeah yeah following your joy doesn't mean it's not frustrating or doesn't hurt you sometimes no and that the joy somehow sustains you yes yeah you know, exactly. yeah because you you know I, w I wouldn't recommend writing a book to anybody so I just think there's much better things to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but if it's your joy, yeah. I, I'm just I'm so sorry for you because it means you've got to do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. So what you mean. It's your joy. But, yeah. You know, and you might you might sweat tears and and blood even, but it's your joy and that's big, isn't it? It is. And I think it's such an important aspect of, of following your purpose to yeah. follow your joy, right? And for young people who are choosing what to do to, to just do that, really. Yeah. Know, know what you enjoy and go for that. Well, this is, I think, one of the great challenges at the moment with our millennials, you know, yes. who I think in many ways are having their midlife crisis 20 years early. Yeah. You know, um, and they they're looking at the adults, they're looking at the parents, and then and they're basically saying, "Well, who's enjoying themselves around here?" Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't see anybody enjoying themselves. No, is this so, what life's supposed to be? Yeah, yeah. you're telling I... me to sign up for that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, that doesn't sound like fun. So I think it's a radical thing to want to follow your joy. I think it takes a lot of courage. It does. Um, yeah and you know and and it's maybe it's one of the roads less traveled yeah i think so too it sounds like an easy road but it's not really no i think by the time somebody we're aware that somebody is following their joy we often are only seeing the harvest yes. you know we we haven't seen all the stuff that you know mm -hmm. that happened before that yeah so can be yeah misleading. yeah all right, number eight. Um, okay, well, this really is, I think, over to you. Mm -hmm. Are you happy with the challenger? Uh, yes, but I also really like the protector. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Maybe as a woman, being an aide, I really, I really like that word as well. Yeah. But yeah, sure, the challenger is, is a really good word because it's always there. Yeah, I really have to watch the inner challenger all the time because it's always challenging me to to do more to push myself. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And 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 as well, I do like a challenge. I do like to be challenged. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And to find the level of of when that's enough <laughs> is a uh, yeah a big life challenge as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's. Mm. I think this is what one of the things I just love about the Enneagram is it is it sort of shows us that if these things weren't a fixation, they would just be our joy. Yeah. Yes. You know, and I don't think the what I love is the Enneagram's never trying to take anything away from us. No. Really, no. Other, other than our pain, you know. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. But it's trying to show us, yeah, God, what how wonderful to want to. Mm -hmm. you know to be up for the challenge of living yeah yeah you know, and and to to meet that challenge and to say yeah i'm really i want to say i really lived yeah 
you know I, I absolutely I don't want to be you know half-hearted about this no yeah I want to be I really want to be able to say that for the short time that we were here yeah I gave it a good I gave it a good shot you know I was here completely yeah, yeah. and it's sort of it's sort of being an aid it's sort of not a choice that you can make well of course you can balance it but you know when i was younger i'd often think wow it must be so nice to be able to put your emotions aside a little bit yeah. or to, to put whatever you go through aside a little bit but it's not and and now i've really come to appreciate it because i do work with whatever's in my life and finish the job sort of <laughs> yeah yeah i don't put things aside i'm i'm right in it all the time yeah that's really i'm i wonder like with threes and eights by the way like i mean do you know i just wonder if like if i have my eight friends because mm -hmm. i i have to think about like with the enneagram you know i came i came to it at 30 something mm -hmm. so um but there's something about threes and eights when we calm down a little bit yeah we we can really come into something very wonderful i think yes for sure um but i i, I think like you know when i was young as a three my aggressive urge mm -hmm. just to get going was mm -hmm. god you know in many ways there's was was probably working against me sort of thing and i and i wonder with you know uh, when i just think of my eight friends i just mm -hmm. think when you mature into yourself at eight mm. it seems to be more powerful mm. yeah than it was yes in the beginning when there was lots of shows of power often yeah yeah if that makes sense yeah yeah it does feel much more powerful but that's I think you know being um, being able to own our vulnerability mm. is actually very empowering. Yeah. And um, and also being able to let to let go of things. Yeah. Just let things be. I I remember when I started practicing that you know having a conflict with someone that I didn't solve, like yeah. letting it be, just let things work on its own and see what would happen. And in the beginning it was like, how do people do that? <laughs> yeah. How is this possible? And mm. now I love it to mm. just, yeah, to just lean back and see how things goes. Yeah, that's so interesting. Mm. Isn't it amazing how we are like that? You know, I mean, I, I would often just shy away or shrink from certain things like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then if I think of my eight friends, I think, well, I understand why you'd want to keep going because you've got, you've got the tenacity, the resilience to win. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's like, I think I shied away because I always thought, I, well, I can't win that argument. I won't. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, that, but, that's not a possibility. <laughs> yeah, but like my, my yeah. eight friends, I think, well, yeah. Because I am right. I do yeah. know this. Is <laughs> and you can do it. It's like you'll, you can go 12 <laughs> rounds and, yeah. you know, yeah. 15 rounds and more. Yeah. I think, I mean, for me at eight, I do think it's, you've mentioned about the vulnerability and I, and I think it's, for me here, it's about, um, you know, like if at one we talk about a higher power, mm -hmm. in a way maybe at eight, it's also about just, um, it's surrendering to a power greater than my own. Yes, and a will greater than my own. Yeah. Which yeah. is quite big then. <laughs> it is, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 But this does feel, this feels to, 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 to it that, that, that in some ways that I can, on an ego level, I can, I can inflate myself to a certain extent, mm -hmm. um, to a great extent. Mm -hmm. I can be the leader of countries, you know, mm -hmm. I can, I can, I can be the king and queen of my kitchen and I can be the king and queen of my country. I mean, you know, it's yeah, all there, mm -hmm. but I, I think there's there's some sense of relief of not being the one in charge. Oh, a great sense of relief. It's really huge. Yeah. 
Yeah, and even though I've been working with it for a long time, just talking about it now, it touches me. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's so it's so big. Yeah. And it's such a great relief. It is a relief, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. To allow yourself to be helped by something greater than yourself and yeah. And to not know. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's remarkable, isn't it, to 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 want to develop our own strength, develop mm -hmm. our own power. Mm -hmm. And and then it does feel like like the most supreme sort of martial art almost where you develop all of that and and almost so that you can recognize there is a power greater than your own mm -hmm. does yeah. that make sense it's yeah. yes you, you're coming to the surrender through through developing your own powers somehow yeah yeah Yeah, that's, I love the, the lessons uh, in A Course in Miracles about um, not knowing what's for your own best. Yeah. Because usually at point eight, we do think that we know what's for my own best. And if it yeah. doesn't go that way, something's wrong and I need to correct it. Yeah. And, and so to just letting go of that is, is really huge. And um, in my defenselessness, my safety lies. And that's really a, a big lesson for me as an aid as well. I, I really love that. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? There's nothing to defend. There's nothing I need to fight. Or, yeah. yeah. I think the phrase like, you know, the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. There's a bigger picture here. Yeah. And I mean, the course with that lesson that you pointed out, you know, in my defenselessness, my safety lies, mm -hmm. you know, the the course points out that whatever we defend against, we attract. So yeah. in a sense, for as long as we are working on our defenses and mm -hmm. building up our, our own sense of a strong self, mm -hmm. um, on, on, on some level, we're still playing small. Yeah. We're saying that we're not may strong. be, you know, the biggest, mm -hmm you know, the most powerful, strongest, most fortified ego in the room, which is, can be really helpful. It's still sort of playing small on some level, but to go for that bigger picture. Yeah. Um, it's not, it's, it's really not trusting our own inner strength. No. Mm. Yeah. It, it's, it's a bit like as well, I think like, you know, there's a lot of conversation about manifesting, you know, and how to manifest your life. And, yep. <clears throat> you know, it, it's all very good. But but at some point, I think we're more interested, not so much in, in what we're able to manifest as as what is already manifesting. Yes. There's something manifesting here already. Yeah. And actually to be. To, to ride that wave, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and that's, that's thrilling. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. you know, and possibly even ultimately more interesting than what, what I can manifest Yes, is what's manifesting now. Yeah. And how can I, yeah. How can I participate in that gigantic movement that's happening in consciousness and that's happening in creation how yeah. can i side with that yeah and um and be used back to the like the line to two how can i be used exactly. with that exactly I, I think that's it that's thrilling it is it's wonderful it's yeah. really beautiful it's exciting you know as yeah. well yeah and yeah so it's and I, yeah, but that sense of the, there's a bigger picture here. Mm -hmm. I want to play big, but playing big, I think you've, I think, you know, mentioning the vulnerability, being willing to just to, to, to um, dismantle some of the defenses of the ego. So as to allow that mm -hmm. other, you know, to let some strength in. Yeah. Yeah. It feels really good. Yeah, it does.
I think and maybe another one, by the way, just even as well, whilst we're at eight, though, is, is just recognizing it's something that is so important to do just in life it is just to recognize some of our natural strengths. Yeah, that's you know, true. Yeah. I mean, it's something that gets talked about a lot, like in leadership and things. Yeah. But, but yeah. Actually, you know, just acknowledging that there's a natural strength here. Um, yeah. In the way I parent, there's yeah. a natural strength here in the way I in the way I am with my friends, the way yeah. I teach, yeah. the way I write. Yeah, I think just owning some of that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a big one too, especially for for women at point eight. Yeah, owning and the strength. It's empowering, isn't it? I think just to it do is. that, and and yeah. <clears throat> we not 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 every culture supports that sort of an inquiry, you know. No. Um, but I think it's worthwhile. Yeah. You no, know, I mean, all we're doing, we're not trying to say we're stronger than anyone else. We're just trying to say these are strengths we've got. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and 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 again, possibly with the line to two, they were their strengths that were given to us. Yes. They're just they 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 are cultivated. You know, we we haven't had to work so hard at these ones. It, it's yeah. actually just honoring them seems to yeah. develop them yeah which goes for all of our types right really yeah. honoring the the essence of who we are is yeah maybe that's why we are here to really yeah. to really do that to find out what is what is the 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 the, the true self in me and how do i honor that and maybe yeah. that's what i'm here to do yeah yeah it feels great no matter what i do yeah yeah, because uh, exactly, because then it, and while this comes to one of the, I think the great strengths at, at, at nine as well, which is, you know, is this capacity for being. Yeah. You know, being in the world, mm -hmm. like properly being in the world. Yeah. You know, like it's, like at three, you know, I, I mean, being is, is my missing piece. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm do, do, do. Yeah. And, uh, and this, and I think that's often because I've never, you know, I've, I've never allowed myself to be. So mm -hmm. I have to allow myself to experience what being is like. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I often think like, you know, when you're putting together a recipe, if let's say you add some salt and pepper or you add some cumin mm -hmm. or caraway seeds, you know, they don't have to do anything else now mm -hmm. to make a contribution. They just have to be part of the flavor. Mm -hmm. um, and I think like at, at nine, you know, it, it's recognizing what an extraordinary thing it is just to participate and be in the soup of everyday life. Yes. And, and know that your presence really, really contributes to the flavor of the world. Yeah. You know, yeah. and really trust that. Yeah, just in your being. In your being. Yeah. It, exactly right. And mm -hmm. I think that, um, you know, this is one of the great you know, the, the great strengths at, at nine is to, is to somehow join in. Yeah. And really be in the world <clears throat> and, and contribute your presence and contribute your love. Yeah. And, you know, and I think anybody who has a healthy nine friend <clears throat> will say, you know, we always feel so affirmed mm -hmm. by, by our nine friends. They're mm -hmm. just, you know, they're there for us. <clears throat> the key is to make sure at nine that you don't disappear in the process yeah. of being here for us. So, yeah. you know, that you really are able to be present. Mm -hmm. um, in the program that we did, the thing I, I liked to focus on was, was about, was dreaming actually. Mm -hmm. And saying that, you know, to, to fulfill your purpose, you have to be willing to dream. Yeah you know and so important it is important mm -hmm. and i know that in the enneagram of personality we like 
you know, we very quickly will say, well, I've got to be careful not to dream too much, you know, mm. and to be mm. too dreamy and, mm. you know, and all of that. Um, but, you know, this is a strength at nine to dream. Yeah. Um, and to allow yourself to dream in a way where <clears throat> you allow the imagination to guide you, instruct you, mm and lead you into some path of action yeah and you know i mean imagination until very recently in historical terms imagination was considered more real than the intellect yeah you no know, it was like imagining was was really was the hotline to the divine yeah that was it you know mm -hmm. to to imagining was a way of seeing it was a way you know of 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 seeing possibility yeah <clears throat> and um anyway i just i love the idea that that if you're going to fulfill your purpose sometimes you need some time just to dream yeah for and, sure and allow yourself the the process without uh limitations and you know you will often do that very soon or very early on in the dream right Exactly. It's like, how are you ever going to, whatever. <coughs> and we exactly. destroy the dream. And we are so used to that because our parents might have done that. And it's just part of our society, really. Yeah. To question the dream. Yeah. And you know, when our kids were small, uh, we would actually, I would have had this rule sort of in the house that it was never allowed to say, that's not realistic. That's a stupid dream. That's not Ooh. something that's doable. It's like every dream is welcome. Yeah, I love that. So important. It feels really good, doesn't it? Yeah, to allow ourselves and our children to dream. Yeah. And if you have big dreams for yourself, be yeah, be my guest. I love that. Yeah, it feels really. I think it's a great quality, uh, and I and I and I know it's often what where the nines are criticised for just mm -hmm. being too dreamy and living on cloud nine. But I think, you know, let's, let's not get there too quickly. Let's recognize there's a real strength here, which is yeah. this capacity to imagine. Yeah. A capacity, uh, and, and in the imagining, I think it's a sense, there's a sense of remembering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, there's something yeah. here. This isn't all, what we are dreaming up isn't brand mm -hmm. new. It's more mm -hmm. delivering something that's available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it uh, might be even allowing ourselves to remember what we signed up for. Beautiful. Wow. How about that? Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I, yeah, and to trust that without rationalizing anything really. And, and to, yeah, and again, not to know what it's going to look like in, in your practical life. It doesn't matter. It's an amazing assignment, really, Kisser, isn't it? Because it's it's you know like like in our in our presence of love group mm -hmm. where we study a course of miracles on you know, Facebook. Like, yeah, we we often um you know we've referred to ourselves as like the secret love agents. You know, mm -hmm. like we're here on a mission and we're yeah. spreading the love. But you know, like a true agent you know, we don't always know what the big picture is. No. You know, we've just been given an assignment and the assignment mm. is show up. Yeah. You get parachuted down. Yeah. You know, and you've just got to show up. Yeah. And it's like, well, if you, and if you need any more information than that, you're probably in trouble. Yes. You've just got to show up. Yeah. And trust what feels right in the now, right? Yeah. Yeah. And really be here, like yeah. properly be here. And it's like, yeah. well, how does that help? And then, then you have to, I think you have to say, well, who's asking that question? Well, that's the intellect asking. That. Yes. Yeah. So it's, we have to have compassion for the intellect because the intellect doesn't always know what this is for. No. And it can't get its head around it. Yeah. I think so much early in my life, I, when I was like 15 or 16, I knew I had to do therapy. I had this inner urge to see things clearly and to become sane and you know things like, and I didn't know why I had it. I just knew that I did. Yeah. And because I didn't know I was going to be a psychologist or whatever. At yeah. all. It was just this longing. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's, it's a good example of, we don't know what, things are for but we just need to trust 
every minute of life and and do what feels right and and maybe at some point we get a bigger picture of everything maybe yeah. <laughs> so it feels to me like at nine it's 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 about saying like yes like mm. say yes to being here because because that that's that is the, one of the great strengths at nine is this phenomenal sense of of affirmation and and, and affirming mm -hmm. um, and say yes to your life mm -hmm. say yes to you being in your life yeah and if anything i would say as an exercise at nine it's about well find your find a sacred yes mm -hmm. yeah find, cool. find a sacred yes that's worth showing up for mm -hmm. Yeah, and that goes for all, for all of us, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a beautiful nine-point meditation. Yes, the sacred. So this yes. is my yes, and I'm going to show up for it, even if it gets me into trouble. Yeah, you know, yeah. even even if there's conflict. Yeah, this is my sacred yes. Yeah, and this is what helps me to remember heaven, and this is what helps me to remember the oneness and this is what helps me to feel that i'm part of the whole picture yeah and it's so powerful yeah yeah i think it's just i'm making a note to myself about this because i think this is a good one at, at nine like just but showing up for the yes yeah yeah i love that yeah it feels good doesn't it, it, it it's, does. it's um actually interestingly and i didn't do this at at, at uh on the on on our workshop mm -hmm. but i really think joseph campbell's work fits mm -hmm. really well here mm -hmm. um at nine mm -hmm. and um you know one of one of his his great sayings is is uh, the big question is will you say a hearty yes to your adventure yeah now you know it's um there's something about saying yes to to the to the adventure of your life you yeah. know and but but it's a yes that includes you. Yeah. And I also think that point nine can remind all of us that, um, that just being here, uh, like when I have groups, I always think that, that we all contribute just by just being, even if you don't say anything or, yeah, you, just being here is enough. Yeah. Your, your being on, on earth is you're already contributing yeah yeah it's it's um it's true isn't it it's yeah, true it's, and we forget that all the time i think yeah we get yeah. caught up in all the different strategies that will um allow us to feel that we are enough yeah yeah it's so true so I like, I, but I like this one of just the yes. What's your sacred yes? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, what can you, what can you truly say yes to that feels like you're, you're in union with the divine? Yeah. 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 I really like that. <laughs> wow. Wow. Do you know your sacred yes? Well, do you know, Actually, one of the things that I do is I, I, as one of my practices for the year is I actually, I actually create um, a, a a yes board. Mm -hmm. So I do I put up my yes boards, mm -hmm. and um, and so there's there's a few things on there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the first one is to my spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's my sacred yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I begin. And I just, I start with my spiritual practice, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but the Enneagram is always on my yes board. Mm -hmm. You know, just some, some way in which I can learn some more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? I mean, honestly, it, it's because that's on my yes board that, that I say yes to you. Do you know? Because it's like, it's a, it's a referred yes. It's yeah. on the yes board. Yeah. And, and the sacred yes board. Yeah, it's like it's just there. It's like mm -hmm. it's the Enneagram and mm -hmm. it's Kisser and I know you. So you know what I mean? Like it that really helps because I, also I think when you study yeses, this is quite fun, I think, from an Enneagram perspective. 
is that there are some types that I think are yes types uh, yeah. more naturally. Yes. I mean, I think like threes, sevens and eights, you know, we're, we're a bit yesy. Let's um, do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's why actually I like the distinction of sacred yes. Yeah. Because, you know, I've got quite a lot of yeses. I mean, there's so many possible yeses. I mean, yeah. that's the fun of life. Yeah. Um, so you could say too many. <laughs> so actually, let's, let's, you know, so, and so for other types, they're more no types. Mm -hmm. I think like fours, yeah. you know, are often no types. Um, I'll give you a funny story of this. I, I'm going to tell on Holly because Holly, my wife, she's a four. But we went for, um, on Saturday, we went for a walk through London for, with Shakespeare's sonnets. Yeah. And the idea is it's, it's a walk. You go with a small group. And as you, as you go on the map, um, actors dressed as normal people, mm -hmm. like riding a bike and, or on their phone, will appear and then talk to you and then recite a sonnet. Mm, wow. And it was really quite a remarkable thing. But yeah. just before we began, Holly just said, if this is no good, we don't have to stay for all of it, do we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, that, yeah. and that's like, yes. you know, and that's exactly the, you know, the, it's like, yeah. no, but if it gets good, then it's, yeah. 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 It was yeah. And it's really funny. Whereas yeah. I'm just like, well, no, we've said yes. So we've got to stay for all of it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I, I can actually really relate to that. I might have that. I would have had that thought too. Yeah. Yeah. It because was, I want to be trapped in something I don't want to do. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It was very, it's, and it's a very fair point, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. But as ever, like what's so cool about the Enneagram is making sure you're not fixed on something. Yeah. You're not fixed on your no and you're not fixed on your yes. Yeah. But I must say just, yeah, for me, like, because I can always lean towards more yeses than no's, mm -hmm. having a sacred yes mm -hmm. or having my sacred yes board. Yeah. You know, like um, making sure I do the school run, you know, at least two times a week. Yeah. Like that's important. That's a sacred yes. Yeah. Because otherwise I'd, I'm, you know, that's a, probably a sign that I'm getting busy about something that's not important. Yeah. Even though yeah. I think it is. Yeah. So it's really following your, your soul values. I think so. That's right. That's a mm. nice way of putting it. Mm. Yeah. How about you? Let's, let's, what's the sacred yes for you? Um, that's a good question. It's, it's definitely um, always looking at life truthfully. Mm. And with great courage, <laughs> mm. even when I don't feel courageous to yeah. find courage to do that. Um, and uh, yeah, and helping other people do the same. Mm. And also my family is on my sacred uh, yes board as well. Yeah. Yeah. To always remember to what's, what's really important. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's the what's really important, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and what, what am I really here for? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, what am I really here for? That's beautiful. That's the... And that's the thing, isn't it? I think that's what I'm really here for. Again, back at nine, that's... Yeah, it's beautiful. You know, and if I get caught up in wanting to be here for lots of other people and living my purpose and things and, and forget what's... Forget my family or myself or, you know, things yeah. like that. That's not what I'm really here for. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, How's that, man? <laughs> yes, so this is amazing. It is. I'm so grateful the Enneagram is on your yes board and that yeah. that allowed you to say yes to do this conversation because of, yeah, I'm really grateful for that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, so this is such fun. And I mean, I've made lots of notes as we've been talking because there's just so much in the conversation that's leapt out at me here. And, you know, I mean, I, I you know, I, I'm sure, well, I think it's worth saying, you know, you get so much more out of the Enneagram it, when, you, when you meditate on all the points. Yeah, you do. And there are so many good lessons here. And yeah. 
you know, I know in the West we've got all all excited about the personality of the Enneagram, but it's really, really good to know that there are nine meditation seats on offer here. Yeah, I, I really love that. It, it gives mm. us a lot more compassion for each type, right? Absolutely. Yeah, more compassion and, 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 and yeah, just more like nine meditation seats. How lucky are we? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. You know, we get to we get to play with all of these, and um, and it's yes. wonderful. Thank you so much for. I I hope this is the first of a series. I hope Somehow so too. We can we could do this, couldn't we, with some of the other ones as well? So yeah, we could. I I really I love the way that you teach the Enneagram. Well, it's so obvious to me as well. So that, like you were very, you know, you were very, you know, also. You know, thank thank you for being the one asking me the questions a lot this time. But it's so clear that, like, you know, it was a conversation as well. You know, you're just I love your insights. I love how you just boom, go to it. Um, <laughs> and thank you. Hit us with what you know is a truth, <laughs> and it is. It's that, isn't it? Mm. Being able is being able to see that. Yeah. I think, I think it's another thing that I love about the Enneagram is it really it really honors us for the work we've done and it supports us in the work we want to do yeah and that's very lovely it really does yeah yeah yeah, yeah. thank right. you so much Robert thank you Kissa so much as well from my heart <laughs> thank you thank you take care <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. I hope this might have inspired you to know and to feel the importance of your own life and to become more curious as to your own specific purpose. You can learn more about me on www.kisserpaludan.dk. Thank you so much and please go out and let your light shine.